Hello everyone, Fizgus here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will go over the basics of navigation in the Viper, specifically how to follow a flight plan using the Horizontal Situation Display HSD, as well as the Steer Point page on the ICP. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about navigation and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial you will be able to navigate effectively. Let's get into it. First, let's have a look at a flight plan and how it can be adjusted in the 2D map. The flight plan starts at the airbase you're departing from with lines connecting the different points you're supposed to fly over. You can move the steer points by dragging them with your mouse. You can check at what time you're expected to be at each steer point as well as the speed and altitude you should be at when you get there by checking the flight plan page. You can check and adjust each of these fields, like for example, on steer point 1, you can change your takeoff time to be earlier or later. Underneath, you have the altitude, true airspeed, and calibrated airspeed desired when reaching that steer point. After that, you have the desired formation you should be on, the actions to be taken while on the way and upon reaching that steer point as well as the type of climb and descent indicated. The action at steer point 3 for example is holding point and it has a duration of 6 minutes so you're expected to orbit there for that amount of time. These holding points are put in place on most occasions to allow flights departing at different times and sometimes from different airfields to marshal together so that the package goes to the target area as a cohesive unit. As you can see the final steer point for this flight plan is steer point 8. However, if you check steer point 9, there are indications for this as well. This is an alternate field. If for some reason you are unable to land at the primary landing base, there will not be a line connecting to the alternate field, and it's by default the last steer point on this list. Additionally, when there are pre-planned threat steer points, either when you create them, or if the mission already has them, which is the case here, you can check their coordinates when in the aircraft by selecting the steer point in question. Like I mentioned on my AGM-88 Harm in Has mode, these are used for more situational awareness rather than a point that you have to fly to. Make sure to study your flight plan before every mission and make any adjustments you feel are needed. You just took off from your airbase. Let's have a look at some of the symbology relevant for navigation. First, the DED, or Data Entry Display. On the main page of the DED, this field represents the selected steer point. You can move the cursor to the steer point field by using the Data Control switch, and then use the DED Increment Decrement switch to cycle through the steer points. On the heads-up display, you have the following information. The selected steer point is shown here along with the distance and nautical miles to it. This is the steering cue. It is always pointing to the selected steer point. If you position the aircraft in a way that this is on the flight path marker, or FPM, it will represent that the aircraft is pointing directly at the steer point. This is the steer point symbol, only present on the HUD if the aircraft is facing the selected steer point. Now let's have a look at the Horizontal Situation Display, or HST. If you zoom out enough, you will be able to see your entire flight path represented here. The selected steer point is shown as a filled in circle, while the others are hollowed out ones connected by lines representing the flight path. In yellow are the pre-planned steer points which were mentioned earlier. You can cycle through the steer points manually like I showed earlier. Alternatively, you can set the steer points to cycle automatically when you're getting close to them. Go to the steer point page by pressing 4. Here you can see the selected steer point, the cycling mode it's in, manual or automatic, its GPS coordinates, altitude, and at what time you're expected to be there. If you hit sequence, you will change the cycling mode. In automatic, as you are approaching the steer point, the system will automatically cycle to the next one. I recommend having this on manual if you plan on orbiting a steer point, like for example, when you're working over a target area.
By using the airspeed caret, you can have a visual representation to aid you to be at the correct airspeed at all stages of the mission, allowing you to be on time at each steer point. Go to the cruise page by pressing 5. With the cursor over the TOS field, press 0. The field will be highlighted and you will see along the airspeed tape a caret. Manage your airspeed to match the caret and you will be on each steer point on time. And there we have it. These are the basics of navigation on the Viper. What I showed is just navigation using steer points in the system. This is not considered navigating in VFR or IFR. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.